Welcome, my dear brothers, my dear sisters, to this special time of prayer and encounter with God. On behalf of the Archbishop of Accra, Most Reverend John Bonaventure Kofi, I want to welcome you all to this special time organized by the Council of Catholic Professional Guilds. On behalf of the leadership of the guild, and their chaplain, Father Dennis, and on behalf of Father Salifu, who is chaplain of the Business Management and Finance Professionals Guild, I want to welcome you to this special time. I want to urge that we take it seriously. I want to urge that we open up ourselves to God as he speaks to us, and as we later on speak to him, and encounter him in a special way we have never before. So that our Lenten journey will be a special one this time than it has ever been before. In a moment of silence, shall we just close our eyes, call to mind our faults, ask God to forgive us, and put ourselves in the mood to encounter God on this very mountain, just like Peter, James, and John did. And Peter was able to say, it is good that we are here. We shall build three tents, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah, because we do not want to leave this special encounter. Just tell God you come with your very self. Tell God you come with your joys, your pain, your challenges. Tell God you come with every good thing he has given to you and every challenge you are going through. Tell God you come with your very self, everything that is of you, and you leave nothing behind. You present it all before him today. And you want him at the end of this encounter to transform you. Just pray and ask God to let his Holy Spirit fill your heart. So that today you shall encounter God in a special way. Father most gracious, we thank you for this time. We know that this moment spent in your court is more than a thousand spent elsewhere. We believe that your power is already at work, turning our hearts towards you. We pray that today your words will come to us and cut through our hearts, like on the day of Pentecost. We pray that today your mercy will locate us. We pray that at the end of this recollection, we shall come to walk with you, come to follow you, come to be close to you in such a way that we shall never depart from your presence again. We make all our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So once again, I want to welcome you all. And today we have a special encounter with God to be led by the chaplain general of the of the, the guilds. Uh, so we are lucky. He himself is here. And I want to introduce to you a priest who is the chaplain of Tema Secondary School and also the chaplain of the Council of the Catholic Professionals Guild. Very Reverend Father, I'll say, <laughs> Dennis Opoku. Shall we welcome him? So, Father Dennis. Oh, okay. Before Father Dennis gives us the talk, I am told that Eddie and his team will give us some songs. Oh, Eddie, why? You don't want me to mention your name. Eddie and his team. <laughs> We'll sing from Catholic hymn number 158. God of mercy and compassion, look with pity upon me. Father, let 
Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this evening reflects on the theme, Rend Your Heart, Not Your Garment, from Joel chapter 2, verse 13. And before going to the text, I bring you fraternal greetings from the Metropolitan Archbishop of Accra, Most Reverend John Bonaventure Kofi, in whose place I share these reflective thoughts with you. My dear brothers and sisters, the season of Lent 
is always a great time for great introspection and renewal. A time for us to learn how to give up certain habits for the higher spiritual good. Indeed, Lent offers us the opportunity to ask ourselves the questions, what are the do's and don'ts of my spiritual journey? At a time of great mortification, a time of self-denial. You know, the key factor there in the Lenten season is an opportunity to get out of our system things that we do not need for our journey. But the funny thing is that Catholics for some time now have always looked at Lent, okay, an opportunity, an opportunity for us to deny ourselves, let's say, fast on food or certain habits, and then just wait in, and then after Lent, go back to them again. But that is not the spirit of Lent. It is rather an opportunity for us to look at and then take out the things that are not needed, not to pick them up again, but then take them out of ourselves for entirely. And so if you are part of those groups who say, okay, this Lenten season, I'm fasting on certain habits or certain attitudes because it is Lent. And then after Lent, I go back, then rethink. Take a second look at it, and, because that is not the spirit of Lent. Once you give up, you give up for good. And so if you're not ready to give up, then don't start it at all. But that is where, again, the grace of God also abounds. The difficult and the challenges of prayer and fasting to help us be able to give up all the time. Because once a habit that has been practiced for a long time, it becomes so key accustomed to our lives, it's very difficult sometimes to let these habits go. But indeed, the compassionate heart of God and the hand of God is always there to help us to be able to do away with these habits. And so my dear brothers and sisters, it is tonight we're looking at that call to say enough is enough we put a stop to what we are doing. It is a break. A break not in terms of pause, but a break in terms of putting a total stop to whatever that we are doing. This evening, my dear brothers and sisters, I walk with you through the words of the prophet Joel to the house of Israel, which was a response to a question that they put to him. Who can endure this? Having listened to the words of God, the house of Israel, in Joel chapter 2, verse 11, it goes, the, the Lord utters his voice at the head of his army. How vast is the host. Numbless are those who obey his command. Truly, the day of the Lord is great. Terrible indeed. And then the question comes, who can endure it? And that was a question they put to the prophet Joel. Who can endure it? And so, beloved in Christ, faced with this future invasion and that imagery that Joel develops for them, that an allegory between the invading army of God and the local swarm, the people so frightened about the disaster that is about to befall them. And so they ask the question, how or who can endure the hand of God, the destructive hand of God? Beloved in Christ, Joel 2, 12 to 14 reveals how long suffering and patient God is with his covenant people. But even now, in the situations in which you and I stand, the circumstances in which we find ourselves, the offer of a return to fellowship with God, our God is held out to us. The far greater disaster that lies ahead is an even greater reason for the people to repent than is the locust plague. Beloved in Christ, you will understand the situations of Israel could be compared with our own situations today. Yes, our land is still flowing with milk and honey. Israel were told that the wine press is going to go dry, the farms are going to go dry. Yes, indeed, our situation sometimes can be compared to that. But the Lord says one thing to us. That he is there. Far be the disaster that comes. The Lord appeals to them, using the phrase, even now, to indicate that it is not yet too late to appeal for his forgiveness. 
sometimes in life we think that, you know, it is over. It is late. Things are gone. But the words of the Lord to have so even now to let you know that it is never too late. If you think that you have not started Lent properly, say now is the appointed time. Now is the desirable time for you to rethink. Think about the ways in which you have dealt with the Lord your God. Israel forgot itself. Israel indeed thought everything was okay. But the future was bleak to them. Beloved in Christ, the now indicates that, as I said, God's forgiveness is even eminent to all of us. Do or two calls on us to that repentance. Beloved, deep remorse was often shown by the people by tearing their clothing. But today, the law says, rend your hearts, not your garments. He is not interested in the outward expression of our remorse, but the inner. What do you feel within your heart? How do you feel yourself at every point in time when sin abounds? Beloved in Christ, our hearts is what the Lord expects from you and me. We change our minds and change our attitude. The things we look at all the time will also change for us. Our hearts. Rend your heart. What is your attitude towards sin? It's a question that needs an answer. Is it so normal for you? So fine. But beloved in Christ, there's nothing like a normal sin. There's nothing like it's okay to do the wrong. Everybody's doing it. Society's accepting it. I'm doing business. And that is the best way I have to do business. Remember that the future of your land is in your hands. You are a business and financial professional. Your daily activity is indeed controlled by your conscience and how you deal with God all the time. And your activities to bring about production and productivity among people. People place their trust in the things you do all the time. In the banks. In your companies. In the various businesses you set up. People put their faith in you. So we think that it is normal to deceive them. It is normal to make profit at their backdrop. No, it is never normal. Beloved in Christ, repentance is possible because God is gracious and compassionate. We need to change our attitude towards work. We need to change our attitude towards life and seek the common good at all times. Remember, he says, now is the time. It is not tomorrow. If things are not going on well, now is the time for you to rethink. How do I deal with God? How do I indeed go before my God all the time? I've always loved these words of the, our Father prayer. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And I always tell my friends, once you cannot deliver me from evil, do not lead me into temptation. Beloved in Christ, our work, our profession sometimes can lead us into a lot of temptations. But once we have fallen into it unknowingly, God expects you and me to come back and beg for forgiveness. One of the greatest themes, the elements of forgiveness, which the Old Testament talks about, is that the Holy God judges sin, is a compassionate God and merciful. The psalmist talks about this in Psalm 1. 03 verse 8 and Jonah 4. Beloved in Christ. So Joel reminds you and me that God is slow to anger. He is compassionate on all who turn to him in repentance and may delay his judgment and avert his prophetic calamities. Beloved in Christ. The Lord our God is waiting for us. Now is acceptable time. Now is the day of his mercy and love. I will invite you as the house of Israel asks that question. And so who can endure the passion of God? Who can endure the future innovation? So the question is also being put to you and me. If we do not repent, how can we endure the invasion of God? The wrath of God, indeed, no one can stand. 
But his mercy is always there for you and for me. He offers us the opportunity at all times. And so the morning when you wake up, ask yourself, how do I encounter my God in, at work? I go to do business. I go to make money. Am I making money on a genuine note? Or I am going to deceive others to make money. Yes, we might have not done our works properly in the past, but now he's asking us to change our hearts. Beloved in Christ, he has compassion for all who turn to him in repentance. He will indeed delay his judgment and avert his prophecy of calamity over you. If he does this, he says, the fertility of the land will be restored. The sacrifice of grain and drink offering will resume. That is what God offers us, great restoration. If we are ready to come back to him, the Lord is also ready to re restore us. If you think that things are lost for you, give him the chance. Go back to him and say, Lord, I am sorry. Because that was the prayer of Israel when they had had the question, who can endure this? And when Joel had given them the answer, rend your heart and not your garment. Change your mind. Change your attitude. Change the way you do things and move towards God in prayer. Fasting and almsgiving. Be charitable towards one another. The land was restored. And so if you and me will also learn that same attitude, learn to forgive as we beg for forgiveness, learn to love as we ask God to love us, beg for his mercy as we are being merciful ourselves, then our lands will be restored. Our fortunes will be restored. That is what God is asking for you and for me. So my dear brothers and sisters in the Management and Financial Guild, now is an acceptable time. Now is a day of great repentance. We too will come under God's judgment unless we turn around and confess our sins. Let us take advantage of this Lenten season. It is a period of grace. Let it not pass you by. But we can be confident that broken hearts and changed lives will result in spiritual renewal. Let us break our hearts with God's mercy and love. Let us change our attitudes and work ethics. Let us look for the positivities of life and our lands will be restored. Our families will have the joys of life. We should never forget that sin will bring shame to ourselves and to the name of the Lord and whom we are supposed to represent in the world. Remember, Christian is your name. It is your identity. Wherever you find yourself, you represent the Lord your God. And sin will destroy this dignity bestowed upon you. Love the Lord your God. Only, beloved in Christ, by turning from our sins, in repentance, prayer, and fasting, can we begin to experience God's blessings, the healing of our lands, the healing of our families, and all that is dear to us. Remember the last words of it, the prophet Joel. Glory was that that came to the house of Israel. They had their harvest. They had their milk. They had their vine. And there was jubilation. And so if you want a great restoration, beloved in Christ, then let us rend our hearts. Let us break that heart before the Lord our God. Let him fill it with joy and peace. The Lord waits for us. Now is acceptable time. Now is the day of fulfillment. May he indeed bless you and me as he blessed Israel. And may he accept our cries this day. May you live in his peace now and forever. Amen.
my dear brothers, my dear sisters. Let's thank God. Just begin to thank God for this opportunity He has given us. Just bless the name of the Lord because this is an acceptable time because He has made it so. Even now, it is not too late because He has accepted it to be so. If He was going to mark our guilt, who would survive? But with Him is found forgiveness, the scripture says. And this is why we revere Him. Just thank the Lord. Just thank the Lord for this opportunity. Another chance for you again. Thank the Lord because you have come back to him again. I come to you once more, my God. Tell him, no longer will I roam. Tell the Lord that you are here offering yourself and you are giving thanks because he has given the opportunity for it. Bless the name of the Lord because if this is a beautiful time, if this is another opportunity for you, so many times you have come to him and gone back. And yet he gives another chance. Just give him thanks. Because you don't get it too many times anywhere. It is only with our God that his mercy, steadfast love, as it's translated, is new every morning and assured for us. For which reason we should give thanks. Just bless the name of the Lord for this opportunity. Bless the name of the Lord for this opportunity. Some people have not had it before. Some people had it. They don't have it anymore. You have had it so many times. You have it again. Just thank God for it. Because it is a blessing. His mercy is a blessing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I come to you. Sing the song with us. Just let it be your prayer. Let it be a blessing unto your heart. And let it be push you to make a return to God never to depart from him again through and never found hell. let's sing that verse again that same first verse and I please mean it as you sing it I come to you once more, my Lord. No longer will I roam, for I have sought the wide world through and never found Now, this is an opportunity for us to empty ourselves. No one who is full already can be filled again. So we want to empty ourselves of all the sins. Father, I've mentioned them. Cheating, some of us lying, some of us adultery. For some of us, it is bearing false witness. For some of us, it is just greed. For some of us, just empty yourself right now. Tell the Lord, all that is dirty, you want to take it out. You want to leave it all behind today. And you don't want to come back for them again because... You are taking steps home. You are taking steps back to God. And it demands that you make an emptying. A kenosis must happen. Empty yourself right now. Take it all out right now. It is not beneficial to you in any way. It is disturbing your relationship with God. That pornography. That masturbation. That adultery. That bearing false witness. That scheming against somebody. That claiming your neighbor's goods. That killing somebody that going to worship another god making something else greater than god just empty yourself right now take it all out right now because sin has no place in the life of the righteous man and he says the righteous shall prosper like the palm tree you are making a return to god let the lord feel that you mean it in this prayer that you make to him Jay, 
just tell the Lord to wash you clean now. Let a stream of mercy be poured upon you. Right now, wash you clean. Just empty you so much. Empty you right now. Everything that is an impurity, everything that is not acceptable for this soul of yours, claimed by God, owned by God, directed by God, sustained by God. Just empty yourself right now of all of it. In that song of David in Psalm number 51, when he has prayed that God should forgive him, he says, Cast me not away from your presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. But before then he says, Grant me a constant spirit. Because he knows that when he has sinned and he has asked for forgiveness, it is possible he can go back. And we want to pray right now that God will give us a constant spirit. A spirit that is so fortified that whatever the temptations may be, we shall overcome them. Just begin to pray that the Holy Spirit will never depart from you. That that constant spirit will be given to you. That spirit that triumphs over every temptation when it comes. Because you want to be victorious at all times. Just pray the Lord to take control. Pray the Lord to direct your spirit. Pray the Lord to strengthen your spirit. That whatever the temptation may be, that shall come again. That you shall be victorious. He says in 1 Corinthians that there is no temptation that comes to you that is beyond your strength. The devil feeds on your desires. He makes you desire so much and go beyond it. But this time he has lied. He has failed. Because the Lord will not cast you away from his presence. The Lord will give you his Holy Spirit never to depart from you. And you shall stand firm before the Lord. Stand firm before the evil one. Stand firm in the face of temptations. And from this day on, because you come to the Lord never to go again, you shall never go again because there is home nowhere except with God. I want us to sing that song of David that he sang in Psalm 51. Away from your presence, oh Lord, and take not the Holy Spirit from me. your eyes 
open your hands and say this prayer after me Lord Jesus Christ Lord Jesus Christ I come to you once more I come to you once more no longer no longer no longer no longer no longer no longer will I roam will I roam for I have sought for I have sought the wide world through the wide world through and never found a home and never found a home with you with you i have a home i have a home with you with you mercy abounds mercy abounds with you with you i am washed clean i am washed clean i am given a new spirit i am giving a new spirit and i will triumph over every temptation and i will triumph over every temptation may this day may this day Begin a turning point. Begin a turning point in my life. In my life. Amen. Amen.